everything that people see on the surface is only the highlight reel and the good times. Every successful person has failed and failed and failed and failed and failed a hundred times over. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth, where I talk to artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Today, I'm joined with a very special guest. Her name is Chelsea Smith. She's the host of Jupiter and Gemini. Nailed it. A podcast that I discovered uh, about a half hour ago. And uh, (laughs) so normally I I do a little more research and a little more, um, you know, a little background and homework about... um, you know, my guests' backgrounds, but I, I think for this one, I'm just, I'd just like to hear a little bit more about you and your background and what you're into. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a art witch. That's kind of the title that I give to people that covers the umbrella of everything I do. Uh, I'm a graphic artist. I do professional tarot and astrology readings. And from that practice has spawned the Jupiter and Gemini podcast. And when I'm not doing all of that, I wax vaginas for a living. Okay. So many questions. Um, (laughs) When you were, uh, when you were like 17, 18, maybe like, you know, in high school finishing up, what did you think you might want to do back then? I knew a few things. I was never going to work a regular job. Um, I was doing some nefarious things to make money at that time in my life. And those things kind of set me up to be very comfortable in running my own business later on. Um, and so I just, I've always been off the beaten path. I was very much, uh, a witch. I've been a witch since I was, you know, before I could walk and, um, I was kind of new to making art at that time. I started in like 2007 and I didn't have any kind of big dreams of that being like a mainstream of income for me or income at all. I was just like messing around. Um, But it was like starting to get some traction. People were like, whoa, this is cool. Can I buy this from you? Like, you know, and so I kind of was like, oh, yeah, like, uh, I guess I could. I actually, my dream when I was little was to be a singer, but that's way too vulnerable. So I went as an artist instead. Um, and it's, it's, it's been really, really fun. So, yeah. So the art came first and kind of the business acumen followed through like kind of a trial and error thing. Yeah. Uh, I originally started doing art, like an ex-boyfriend of mine came home with a bunch of art supplies from a garage sale and was like, Hey, play with this. And I had not done any therapy at that point in my life yet. And um, it was like my first introduction into like meditation practice. That's my dog back there too, by the way. Safira. What's, what's his or her name? Uh, her name's Safira. Oh, she's, hi, Safira. She's my little dragon. Um, but yeah, I hadn't done any art up until that point. Um, and it was my first introduction to like a meditative practice. Like I was able to like really find that like creative zone really easily and it felt very comfortable and very familiar to what it's like to like read tarot or astrology charts like it's it's a very like in the ethers kind of a feeling so um yeah and then it started getting cool and I'm um I'm a like hyper producer like I produce so much stuff so people just started buying it and I was like okay well I guess I'm gonna I'm going to do this as a thing. It was also like social media was really new kind of ish. So it was like, seemed obvious to be like, buy my stuff on the internet, you know? Um, So I kind of went that route and then people did. So this first, like the, you said your boyfriend brought in art supplies. Are you talking like painting or what, what what was your first kind of like foray? Yeah. So behind me, these are all paintings that I've done. Um, Some of these, like this one's from 2007. That was like when I was first getting started. Um, And I kind of have been all over the board. So yeah, he literally came home with like a bunch of like acrylic paints and some canvases and brushes that someone was like getting rid of. And he was like, I think you need this. And I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's check it out. 
So did you kind of discover the um, like the meditative therapeutic side of uh, of that, or is that something you kind of were looking for going into it? No, I wasn't looking for anything. I had no idea. It was a total like shock and surprise. And I got addicted to it. I was like, Oh, my God, my brain is so calm. When I'm like having to focus all of my attention onto making something. Um, And actually, it's interesting, because I've been talking to Annalise while she's been visiting about how I feel like I've kind of lost touch with that with like these art vending events that I do and I have a laser so I like mass produce stuff now and like it's kind of like detached me from that feeling and so I've started venturing into tattooing which is super foreign and super challenging and super difficult but it's giving me that feeling of like really concentrated meditation that I feel like I've been missing from the other work that I've been doing. And so that's kind of like the new level up that I'm like leaning into right now. And it's kind of seeking that feeling. What does, what what does one have to do to, uh, to get into tattooing? Like, do you, uh, I mean, what are the steps? You don't just go out there and, and start putting ink on somebody, right? So I, I'll show you very embarrassingly my very first, these are my three first tattoos that I've ever done. You practice on silicone skin. This one's Chucky um, from the Rugrats. And then I have some um, Powerpuff Girl throwbacks. And so um, to me, this makes me cringe so hard to like show (laughs) these because I'm used to just whipping out like beautiful artwork, like without even thinking twice about it. But these took like, hours of concentrated work for a very cringy result but it was like the most satisfying thing i've done in like six months um Uh, so you're working with a studio in town or oh yeah and and where we don't even we haven't even talked about it where are you based (laughs) um right now i'm based in butte montana awesome Yep. I was previously in Denver for seven years and then I moved to Montana. I opened my waxing studio, um, which is also where I do the tarot and astrology readings. And I also have my art up kind of gallery style. So it's all very integrated. Um, But the tattooing, honestly, I have a friend who tattoos. He's been telling me for years, like, hey, your art would be sick as tattoos and you should kind of jump into this. And I went to Denver and I did like a week long apprenticeship and I got all of the supplies because now like the the uh, machine that I'm using, it's like a cordless battery powered machine that looks like um you know, they're very like it, it's compacted into this little case. You know what I mean? So uh, that's another thing. Lasers aren't very like travel friendly. Um, you can't really like, you know, take a laser abroad or like, you know, where you're going. So that's also super appealing to me. The idea of being able to kind of move around and do tattoos wherever I'm at, because I don't think Butte is like my forever home. Sure. Yeah. Li- little pop up. I mean, that uh, that also works with the other verticals of the business you know yeah yeah um so how about like those first those early like i like so the part of the podcast is like finding the success behind supporting yourself financially and unfortunately mm-hmm. like part of being an artist or or, or or creative professional is like knowing how to make money and, and get sales and stuff like that so so we're really like for other people who are aspiring artists we want to give them you know we've got a couple years behind us so we want to help other people coming up so Some of those early sales, like, did you undercharge? Were you like super excited about those first early sales? Uh, And and have you raised the price of your work? Um, And maybe this is one question I ask a lot um, uh, because I know I'm I'm rambling with my question a little bit here, but um, is there some stuff that works way better than you thought it would? And then other stuff you thought was going to be a grand slam success, but really it's like kind of a dud. Um, Talk us through kind of like that, building up to support yourself full time as an artist? Yeah, um, you got to get really comfortable with failure is the very first thing. Um, Everything that people see on the surface is only the highlight reel and the good times. Every successful person has failed and failed and failed and failed and failed a hundred times over. As far as the pricing, I have said two things. I will not be a starving artist and I will not only make art when I'm sad. 
So those are kind of two pillars that I've lived by. So, I mean, I feel like I have naturally kept my art at a price point that is affordable to the communities who brought me up in the world um, because it was a lot of like grassroots support to start. And um, I like to try and make people feel less weird about the transact about the transaction piece of being an artist. It is because weird. it is it feels weird at first, but it, it's you're exchanging uh, imagination and creativity and your energy and your time. And those things are valuable and worth charging for. And people actually want to pay you for those things. Uh, there's so many people that are that don't have a, a creative like a bone in their body. I mean, they do, but they just don't flex that muscle. Everyone's creative, right? It's it, And everyone's magic. All of those things like blur lines and, and cross over in my life. Like people are like, oh, you're, you're so intuitive. Like you're so psychic. I'm like, and you could be too, if you just work that muscle out, you know, but that's just not where you choose to spend your time. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I actually think I charge very reasonably for the, um, for the, for the products and the art and the prints. But the way I've been able to make money with that is I cut out all of the middlemen. I bought myself a printer that I could print my own prints for pennies. I bought my, I got a bunch of art grants in 2020 during COVID and I bought myself a laser and now I can literally push a button and my laser can make a hundred things while I'm working on a different project that I can turn around and sell. But then The other side of that coin is that's kind of how I found myself a little bit more disconnected from my art than I would like. So there's some give and take there. Um, But I encourage a lot of young artists in my community, like I get them to put up their first table at the farmer's market or do their first gallery showing. And usually I say, what's your gut instinct for a price? And then whatever they say, I'm like, you should probably double it. And that's gen- unless they just have a very reasonable mind where it's like they're pricing it. But but I feel like as a whole, most artists wildly undersell their their art, their time, their ideas. Um, and so I like to push against that. Can you think of any um, people you would consider creative mentors in your or maybe early life or adult, you know, going into adulthood. And then also some people who would, you would think of as mentors in this business sense. Um, so there's a couple of people creatively who like, there's, there's this, uh, illustrator, um, Robin, Eisenhower, I think is her name. And I saw her work. It's very reminiscent of the work that I like to do, like heavy lined illustration, bright colors, like um, witchy naked bodies, like things that I like. And uh, she got hooked up with like Cosmopolitan or something like one of the magazines and was doing the illustrations for their like little monthly horoscope stuff. And through that little connection, she has like launched into like, you've probably seen her work without really realizing it. Like she's all over Instagram. She's done collaborations with Van. She's done collaborations with a bunch of people. And I've always really liked how she operates because she's very like authentic, Um, and it just seems like she's just having a good time and just kind of is in the right place at the right time, kind of like, uh, brand deals. She makes things look very, uh, natural and easy, which I try to emulate. So she was someone that I was looking up to a lot when I was trying to figure out, like, how do people actually make money with art? Um, and I haven't ventured as much into that world as I would like to, but I've always like admired her. Um, as far as business, um, my grand, my grandfather ran a machine shop, uh, that all of my family worked at when I was growing up. And like, I was like two years old running around the machine shop, like watching, I love Lucy on a little black and white TV in the back kind of a vibe. And so like my favorite game to play when I was a kid was like office. 
Like I'm going to like, I'm like a business babe, you know, like three years old, like licking stamps and like ready to do office. So I, I don't know. I feel like I kind of always just intuitively, like, I always knew I would have my own business. Um, I was like, I'm the boss. So I'm going to be the boss, you know? So I haven't um, actually, Annalise has been one of the best people. Like she helped me, um, branch out into owning my own waxing studio and doing the entire marketing plan for that. And, um, you know, we went through the hard beginning of like, how do we go from a brand new business to like a hundred clients, um, which was like, you know, a long, hard road, but it was really fascinating because then when I left my business in in Denver, because I had a waxing studio for five years in Denver, um, that was a struggle to start. I moved to Butte and I've only been open for about a year and I have like 350 clients already at my wow. new waxing studio. Yeah. Like it's, it's popping over there. Um, which is also very encouraging as someone who likes to move around a lot. It's, it's nice to know that pretty much wherever you go, you can start something or plant something and it will like flourish. Would you say um, that there's a strong uh, kind of arts community in Butte? That you're a part of? Yeah, Butte has a very surprising um, artist community and music community. Like, I volunteer on the community radio here, KDMF. I have a little uh, show. It's the only talk show on the radio station where I talk about tarot and astrology and I read very weird, eclectic books that I have on air. Um, and so joining that community has been amazing because people that make music like art and they usually do art and people that do art like music and whatever. Um, and then when I, I was like in town for like two weeks and these little old ladies found me somehow, I don't even remember how, and they had me on the radio. They have this cute little, it's called the art beat and they interview little artists and Butte and like what they're doing and whatever. So they interviewed me and then somebody called me like the next week because they heard my interview and were like, hey, we have an opening for a gallery showing. And so then I did a gallery showing and then everyone came out for my gallery showing and then um, it was for me, it was a very easy community to like integrate into because they're just like kind of starved for like what artists and musicians have here. So when you show up and you're willing to be involved, they're like, oh, yeah, get in here. Like, let's like, what do you want to do? You know, so, yeah, it's been it. I'm actually way busier here in Butte, Montana, of all places than I ever was in Denver. And I have way more like sense of community, which that part's not as surprising. It's a small mountain town. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's actually I've seen some of the best shows of my life here in Butte, Montana. <laughs> Wow. I've yeah. always wanted to visit. So when I, now I have a friend out Come there. Out. So, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. would love to have you. Uh, before I get too far, we've mentioned Annalise twice and I keep, I, I, I meant to do it the first time. Um, yeah. Annalise had an episode of the creative truth in season two, episode four. We talk all about entrepreneurship. Uh, so if you're uh, listening and you're enjoying this one, definitely go back and check that one out. Um, the, I wanted to kind of, work towards the podcast kind of how i mean you, you had the radio oh, yeah. show um did yeah. podcasting come first or radio i mean uh did i mean how long have you been doing astrology when you were like hmm maybe this is something other people want to learn more about walk me what led up to the starting the uh, jupiter and gemini all right you asked for it. it's a long lead up so I have lesbian grandmas, and one of them was a psychic investigator for the FBI, a tarot reader, and an astrologer. And so I was raised on astrology and tarot the way other people maybe are raised on religion. Um, so as far as how long have I been doing it, literally since I could walk, talk, like was cognitive, I've been doing it. I got really hyper obsessed with it probably around like eight to 12. I am a huge book nerd. Uh, you can only see a little bit of my bookshelf here, but it's like top to bottom, dusty old book references on astrology and tarot that I've read a hundred times cover to cover. Um, so I've been doing it forever and I have a huge family. I have 26 first cousins. So I wow. started as like the family 
tarot reader and astrologer that everyone would come to with any and every problem they ever had, like, let's read cards, whatever. And then I had a a psychic who was kind of a mentor. And I was like, hey, I want to read professionally. And she was like, you're actually not ready to do that. Uh, You need to learn to like protect your energy, you need to learn something called like psychic amnesia, which is where you just kind of cash out the reading that you do for people so that you're not carrying around all of this energy with you all the time. Um, And then when I was doing my waxing studio in Denver, um, I started offering readings and the readings are actually the most expensive of anything that I offer. Like I was saying, my art is fairly affordable. Um, The waxing is competitively priced, but my tarot and astrology reading are $120 an hour. Um, So that's actually like the, the thing that I feel like I'm the most gifted. It's the most like valuable thing that I have to offer my community. Um, And so, yeah, I started, I started, I had this space that I was waxing in and it was actually a brilliant, beautiful Annalise who was like, why wouldn't you be doing tarot and astrology up there? And I was like, oh my God, duh, all the cutesy girls that come and see me for beauty services want to get their cards read, one-stop shop, like stop trying to make them separate things. And so, but I've always been like, I am the local witch wherever I am. Like I'm the local witch in all my friendships, all my communities, anywhere I've ever lived. And so I've been spouting this information for a hundred years. And then someone was like, hey, you know what's really popular right now? Podcasts. You know what you should probably do? A podcast. And I played with that idea for years. You can ask Annalise, probably three or four years. I was like, maybe I'll do a podcast. Maybe, I don't know. And then I got to Montana and everything in my life slowed down drastically. I went from Denver, Colorado to Butte, Montana, population 35,000 people. Um, and so everything slowed down. And, and so I, ironically, I started the podcast and the radio show almost within a month of each other. The podcast did come first, um, but I maybe had like five episodes out before I uh, started doing the radio show. And then I just kept pumping out episodes, you know, I'm on season four, episode six or something like that. And uh, I do one new moon and full moon every month. So it's it's like pretty consistent. And those episodes add up. And then someone said, Hey, uh, what's your Patreon? I want to support you. And I said, let me make one real quick. And so then I, I made my Patreon set all that up. And now I have my like 10 Patreon followers, which I'm very proud of. Um, Cause I've had it open for maybe a little over like two, like a month or I think I'm on my second month of people like supporting me through Patreon. So Amazing. it feels exciting. Yeah. It feels really cool. But um, I think we should talk a little bit about the struggle too. The reason we got connected today is because I've been getting kind of bored doing a solo podcast and I want to start introducing collaborations and guests and having more like varied topics and things like that. And then you very spontaneously were like, great, jump on my podcast right now. I believe in serendipity, as I said. Yeah, it's full circle. It's totally full circle. Ask and you shall receive. Where would you like to see the podcast go and what direction and and kind of what do you see in, in the future coming for you? Here's my dream. Uh, my dream is that the podcast blows up. Everyone's so excited to be a guest on it. And I'm just like talking to, you know, amazing people. I'm traveling to beautiful places. I have 300 subscribers to my Patreon, and I'm able to move abroad and use that as my virtual income to support myself in my new adventures and and travels and and endeavors that I want to do. I love it. And I I see it happening (laughs) for you because it seems like everything you do kind of turns to gold. So I I love seeing um, other artists out there succeeding. Uh, and the fact that you've been at it for so long, I've only been at it for a couple of years now. So uh, as far oh, as, no, as, as full time. This is just, um, oh, at it as an artist. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say the podcast is only like a year old or so. But yeah, as a whole, we've been doing it for a while. 
That's amazing. Um, so, and, and, and as somebody who also does a lot, it's this, this question is going to be the hardest one for you. How can people learn more about what you do? How can they follow you? Uh, how can they connect with you if they have questions or they want to uh, learn more about, about you? My main hub is Instagram. So if you follow my Instagram, Noble Lion Prince, or you can follow the podcast Instagram, although there's not as much information on the podcast Instagram. It's pretty much just when new episodes drop, which is Jupiter and Gemini podcast. Link trees in both of those to go in a hundred different directions to anything else you could be interested in, uh, including tarot and astrology readings, booking a waxing appointment. I don't know if you're coming through Butte, Montana. I'd love to wax you. Um, different collaborations. If you want to be a guest on my podcast, I'll be doing that from now on. So you can you could just DM me. I'm I'm pretty easy to get a hold of, honestly. And across all social medias, all emails, all everything is noble lion prince which is my um my art company so yeah you can you can find me anywhere on the internet pretty easily awesome well i i love that i got to meet you and that we were able to pull this off in such short notice for both of us so fun um and uh, i'm sure we'll be in touch more because we have our mutual friend annalise and yes. uh and we'll be talking about the pod so uh thank you very much of course. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. It was amazing. And for uh, for the listeners, in upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Uh, so if you have episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave us a good five-star review. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, especially leave a comment. I need more people telling me that they're listening because I keep bumping into people and they're like, oh yeah, I, have, I listen to like every episode or I've listened to a lot of episodes and I'm like, why haven't you said something? So yeah, let me know. <laughs> let me know if you listen and uh, we'll see you in the next episode, hopefully next Tuesday. But uh, you know, sometimes life gets in the way and I, I don't get them out every week, but I appreciate y'all for listening. Chelsea, I appreciate you for coming on and Elise, I know you're listening. So I appreciate you for connecting us and we'll see you in the next episode.